And an ICU nurse from Florida fights every day to save the lives of those sick with COVID. But when her dad got sick, she couldn't do anything about it. What's worth, worse, Lindsay Fairchild could not even hold her dad's hand as he died. He got sick in Ohio and she wasn't allowed into his hospital room. So with no other option, she leaned up against the, ga the glass to take this final photo. You see it right here. Joining me now is nurse Lindsay Fairchild. Lindsay, I'm so sorry for your loss. How are you? Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for having me. So you're a nurse in Florida. You, you, you deal with COVID-19 patients every day. You're fighting to save their lives. And you experience this in a very personal way. So not only is it inundating you in your in your day to day life, now it's 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 broken your heart from from losing your father. What what do you want to tell people who maybe are just tired of all the restrictions? Um, I, you know, I understand where they're coming from. You know, there is a thing that just COVID fatigue and we're all kind of experiencing that. Um, but I think that that photo that I took and the reason, you know, the drive behind sort of posting it and sharing something that was so personal and painful was to really give people an idea that this is an all encompassing problem and, you know, a virus that's affecting everyone in this country. You know, um, it's not just affecting the people that are having to stay home. It's affecting your healthcare workers, your family, your friends, your coworkers. And um, I think that that really showed sort Sort of um, the perspective of not just, you know, the outside world. It's, you know, people aren't allowed in the hospitals right now. They don't really see the bird's eye view of what we're dealing with dealing with and what it looks like, you know, to die from COVID. Um, and so, you know, to show that photo, you see what it feels like to be not only a patient and a grieving family member, you see what it feels like to be a, an ICU nurse sitting at that bedside. You know, we become surrogate families, you know, for these people because their families aren't allowed in. We're trying to stop the spread of COVID. We're trying to, you know, put an end to this pandemic and we're fighting the good fight. And so in doing so, um, we become families for these people. We become the people that sit at the bedside and we hold their hand as they take their last breath. Uh, we become the people that, you know, sit with them and listen to their fears and, and just let them talk and, you know, tell us what they're going through. And um, so now that I've, you know, experienced it myself as a grieving family member and not just as a nurse, um, I've had, you know, a new perspective on it. Um, and so I think it's something important for people to see because, like I said, we're not allowed in the hospitals, so you don't really know what's going on. And uh, the, the statistics, you know, are being debated uh, across the country. And I'm just trying to shed light on the fact that those statistics, those numbers, those 200 plus um, deaths, those are people, you know, those are human beings that had lives and families and interests and hobbies. And uh, we're all in this together, where we like, whether we like it or not. It doesn't always have to be all about politics. There is a human compassion factor to this, you know, that we can all embrace one, each, one another. We're all in this together. Lindsay, because we aren't in the hospital and so many of us aren't experiencing this firsthand. The lucky people aren't experiencing it firsthand and probably the ones that aren't taking the restrictions as seriously. What is it like? Tell me, tell me what you have experienced um, sitting there and, and holding someone's hand as they, as they die alone. Um, it's heartbreaking. You know, you have the weight of the world on your shoulders. We became nurses and healthcare professionals because we want to save people. We want to be able to help our communities. We want to see people get better and go home. Um, in the ICU setting, that's not what we're seeing. You know, we're seeing a lot of death. We're seeing a lot of heartbreak. Um, we're seeing a lot of families being ripped apart, you know, not being able to be there for your loved one in their last moments. Um, it, when that happens, somebody has to step in and be your family, you know, for your family. And what's happening is that the healthcare workers are the ones who are stepping in. We're the ones who are being family for you while you're not able to be there. And that's stressful. It's a heavy burden to carry. We're happy to do it because we want to help people. We want to be able to save lives and we want to be able to be there for people in their final moments. But it's painful. It's something that I take home with me. You know, you try to keep it together while you're at work and then you go home and you cry and you, you know, you get in the shower, you cry by yourself and you, you tell yourself that it was a tough day. Um, but I believe in what I'm doing and I'm going to keep fighting and I don't want to let anybody down. I don't want to let families down. I don't want to let my patients down. I don't want to let my community down. And so we just keep on fighting. We keep on pushing through. We're exhausted. You know, we're short staffed. We're working extra hours um, to provide the correct amount of care that these patients are required. Wiring. Um, so it's painful and heartbreaking and exhausting, um, but we're happy to do it. We want to step up and be there for our country.
you shouldn't have to do it so much. People should wear masks, take it seriously. Um, Absolutely. You know, I know you've said that you're thankful for for the nurses who held your father's hand when you couldn't be inside that room. I know that there are a lot of families out there who are thankful that you could be inside the room for their loved ones, uh, helping them as they as they moved on. Nurse Lindsay Fairchild, thank you so much for joining us and, and sharing that. I think more people need to hear stories like that. It's just not personal for a lot of people out there. Um, thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.